Hello everyone, last time I showed you this trick, although for this video I'm going to perform it slightly differently. So, you ask a volunteer to shuffle a pack of cards, and then the magician lays them out in rows of ten, like this. And you ask the volunteer to pick any card that he wants from the top row, and he's going to use the value of that card to count along the deck. Uh, picture cards are worth five. When he lands on a card, he then uses that value as his new number, and he repeats the process until he runs out of cards. And then the magician magician makes a prediction. He says, oh, John, you're so predictable. I bet you one shiny pound that you're going to land on this card. Now, this trick doesn't always work, but more often than not, the magician will predict the correct final card, and I'm going to explain how. So how does the magician predict the volunteer's final card? I can tell you that this is not a stacked deck in any way. You don't need any preparation for this trick. What the magician does is that secretly he picks a card himself from the top row and as he was dealing them out he was counting along too. And there is a high probability that both players will land on the same final card. Now this is called Kruskal's count and it was invented by the American mathematician and physicist Martin Kruskal and in fact the probability of success is around 84% and if you don't believe me try this out for yourself. Get a deck, try it out. Here is the magician and the magician is going to pick card number one and here is the volunteer and the volunteer is going to pick card number seven and they'll start off on separate paths but eventually somewhere along the way more often than not they will end up on the same card and from that point on their paths become synchronized until they end up on the same final card. Now that 84% is an average figure over all possible decks. In fact, some decks are even more successful than that, with every single initial card landing in the same final place. And that happens around about 58% of the time. Which means if you have a lot of friends, like I do, then you can do this to the whole audience, and every single person in the audience will land on the same final card. Which is what happened in my last video. Now, Let's take a look at some variations of this. Now we've seen if picture cards are worth 5, the probability of success is around about 84%. If picture cards were worth 10 instead, then the probability of success is going to be 71%. It's lower. And if picture cards were worth 11, 12 and 13, then the probability of success is 66%. Now, mathematically, you can improve your odds slightly by about 1 or 2% if the magician picks the first card. But in real life, if you ask a volunteer to pick a number between 1 and 10, more often than not, they're going to pick the number 7. So that choice will increase your odds even more. You can even make up your own variation. So let's say you're using N cards. In a normal pack of cards, that would be 52. And let's say the cards have an average value of X, then the probability of success is not an easy thing to work out, but we can approximate it with this formula. Now, let's make our own variation. Let's say, uh, let's spell out the values of the cards instead. So, an ace would be A C E, a king would be K I N G, 10, T E N. If we do that, then the cards now have an average value of 4, and we can calculate that the probability of success will be round about 96.5%. Now, that's how you do it. I invite you to experiment, try this out for yourself, and as usual, if you have been, thanks for watching.